Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us in presenting to you the new telecom catalog. We understand that you are all extremely busy and appreciate your time and your presence. As a reminder, if we could respectfully request that you could please mute your phone, and in that way we can concentrate on what we can have to present. I'd like to introduce to you the IST Telecom voice and billing team um, that supports your business needs on campus. As I say your name, please wave your hand or stand up. Um, Terence Fong, manager of IST Billing. <laughs> Gladys Odoi, she's the supervisor of customer. And Colette Jackson, she's our business analyst for. <laughs> and I am, uh, I'm actually going to do the introduction in the next one. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am Jovi Solomon, I'm manager for voice products and services for the campus. So, <laughs> for the agenda, our goal for today in regards to the agenda is to introduce to you the following the telecom catalog uh, introduction, the key changes for the voice products and services, the key change for viewing your IST bills, training and support timeline, new departmental role, the demo of the new telecom catalog, formerly known as shopping cart, how to contact us, and for question and answers, we would like to give you the presentation and answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Why the change? Most of you may be wondering why the change when the current shopping cart seems to be working just fine. For several, several years, the campus made us aware that the shopping cart is not user friendly, it's not transparent enough, it's too complicated to navigate through, it's difficult to find order status, and most importantly, the current system is no longer supported by the vendor and will be retired. So we do take to heart your feedback, and we hope that you will agree that what we've done, we've done that now when you are finally introduced to the new telecom catalog. Key changes. From a high level, the key changes are easy to use, cat easy to use catalog in simpler forms. Um, from the order to the line item change will be provided to you in more detail in the upcoming slide. Attaching spreadsheets and emails right within the order as you submit it. I think that's a plus. Um, tracking your orders from beginning to end. And you will also know which um, IST gr telecom group has your order at any given point. We will also descri describe the sim simplification of the roles, change in a more detail in the upcoming slide. When you see that the product and go through the training, you will see that it's a much easier to use and um, navigate through. <coughs> What are voice products and services? So we have the phones such as your digital and analog lines, the mobile phones and devices such as your cell phones, your tablets, iPads, pagers, voicemail, fax services, teleconferencing um, such as your audio, your web, your video, which is offered via ReadyTalk. Dedicated lines such as your measured business lines for your credit card lines, um, and other stuff, um, T1s, your PRIs, emergency radio service, um, your handheld push to talk, um, used by first responders and non-responders. And there will be a complete list of the products and services in our new telcat.berkeley.edu um, website. Now, I would like to introduce my colleague, Terence Fong, for, to discuss the ISD billing portion. Great, thank you, Jody. Hello everyone, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about your billing data. So in today's world, you access your billing data through two different routes. You go through the shopping cart, which is the traditional way that's been up and running for quite some time, or you go through bears. So the biggest takeaway that we have for you today is with the launch of a new um, telecom catalog system, your data will only be accessible through bears moving forward. So potential homework for some of you. If you currently use bears to access your billing data, the good news is that there's no change. So no homework, awesomeness. If you currently don't have access to bears or are not familiar with bears, we do have a link for you to request the access. 
And in this case, please give your manager a heads up when you request access that will require manager approval. If you are not familiar with BEARS, have not heard of it, uh, please find me after this presentation. I'll be more than happy to walk you through exactly what that financial reporting system is like. Thank you. And next up, we have Gladys, who will talk to you about the work order process. Thank you, Terrence and Jovi. I appreciate it very much. It's nice to see such a large uh, crowd for our presentation today. Thank you very much. So the slide you see behind me is the um, current shopping cart that you know it today. And today, as you place your order, basically the system stops you from tracking it the way you would want to. Um, if, you need to if you want to know the status of your orders, sometimes you may have to call us to find that out. Um, or if your order is delayed, you get emails telling you why the order is delayed. So listening to your feedback and the difficulties you've had in tracking your orders in the current shopping cart, we've implemented it in the new one where it will be very transparent and seamless for you. So from the time you place your order, you will see the entire life cycle of your order as it moves through the system. You will see which department, it's, which group it's sitting with within IST Telecom. Uh, if there is a delay on the part of the consultants, for example, for whatever reason, they'll put notes within it so that as you track your order, you'll be able to see where the order is. So we've made it that transparent for you to track. The next slide is currently what the shopping cart is today. You have the voice products and then also the data services all in one shopping cart as you know it today. Um, our goal to make it simpler and better, implementing your feedback, is to put all of them in one system going forward, but it's not completely built out yet. So for now, we've, we're going to separate the voice products and services into one shopping cart, and that is going to be called telecom catalog. So be, behind me, you see the telecom catalog with the telephone, with the telephone logo there, and on your right, is the current IST shopping cart where you will continue to place your data orders until a future time where we've built it and can put the, all the voice products and data services into one shopping cart. So that's coming sometime in the future. Now, the team that supports your product, voice products and data services today will be the same team that will continue to support you. So that's the consulting unit as you know it, the CCU reps. And as we move forward, the things you do today, you'll still be able to do with, within the two different shopping carts we're talking about. So you'll be able to add, change, move, delete, change your funding, and change ownership of services if there's a need for it. And simplification of roles is something we took to heart your comments and feedback because we had about 14 or 13 different types of access rights that you could assign to different people in your department, which made it difficult. Sometimes a person can create, but maybe they have need to see the um, orders within the department or view um, the um, funding within the group but they are not able to. So we've collapsed all of it and made it very simple into only three different types of roles. So the first role is someone that can create the order. Of course, if you create the order, you'll be able to see your own order, but you will not be able to submit, you will not, excuse me, you will be able to submit, but you will not be able to approve the order yourself. Someone who has read access will be able to create an order uh, be able to obviously submit it to their manager for approval, and they'll also be able to view things like funding changes or all the orders that are within the department, rather the services that are within your department. And the right access, it's like an access rights administrator, which most of you are in the room today. You'll be able to do everything on the shopping cart uh, as you know it today. So you can uh, create an order, submit it, view it, and approve the orders. That's the uh, right access. So most of you will probably have that access because that's what you have today. So now we move on to timelines and the things we need to remember on the timeline. So the key dates to remember is the first one, which is today. You're here. Thank you very much. Uh, the town hall today is the first one where we're giving information about the new shopping cart. 
there will be a second and a third um, town hall meeting, so January 9th and January 14th. And um, by the 20th of December, we are asking for your help in identifying the department liaison, and we'll talk about it further in the upcoming slides. Uh, training, we'll be talking about it some more, but currently we are, we are anticipating training for April 8th through the 10th, but more training dates will be announced later as we move on. And the final date to place voice orders in the ISC shopping cart, as you know it today, will be April 17th. So that means that if you have services that you need to move or important things that you need to happen between April 17th and May 6th, we're really encouraging you to put the order in early, if at all possible. Uh, because within that time, the CCU, the consulting group, will be, will be moving your orders within the current ISC shopping cart into the new telecom catalog. So we'll be busy on the back end moving the orders over. So we really encourage you to keep those dates in mind, place your orders for whatever you need to do between April 17th and May 6th so we can take care of it and move the orders over. We'll also have online webinars uh, beginning in May and we'll, we'll send communication about that later. So what happens and when? So April 18th through May 5, uh, that's when we'll begin to move the orders. And so there'll be no new voice orders that can be placed in the current um, shopping cart, the current ISC shopping cart. Now on the data side, you can continue to place your orders as normal because there's no restriction on the data side. That's gonna remain in the ISC shopping cart for now. So you can continue to place your orders regularly. May 6th is when the new telecom catalog goes into effect. And a lot of information will be going out, training and so forth. So you'll hear a lot more about it after we come back in January. And so what do we need to do to prepare for this change? So we are asking for your help in selecting a single point of contact who we will call the liaison. And this liaison is very important because they'll be working with us in coordinating services and information and so forth through the department. So all of you being access rights administrators, you may choose to be the liaison yourself because it might be easier um, to do that. But if you choose to have someone else be the liaison, we ask that you please help and support the liaison so that they can follow up with the communication, they can follow up giving information to us. When we have to coordinate the training, if we have to go through the liaison, we wanna make sure that they have your full support and backing so that um, we will all be successful in getting the training done. Okay. okay, so the project today has a website um, where you can go visit and so forth. In fact, the presentation we're showing you today will be on that Telecat, Telcat website. Um, so when you leave today, you can certainly go back and review the information. Um, there will be hands-on training, again, as we said, between April 8th and 10th, and more dates will be scheduled, as mentioned earlier. Um, when people come to the training, we'll make sure that there are step-by-step -step instructions that they can take with them because sometimes when you review something or listen to something, you may forget some steps. So the handout will help when the person takes it to the department so they can actually follow if there's need for, for, for that. There'll also be online webinars that we're working on which will be posted to the website in May. And there's a knowledge base that we are working on that will also be available when the system goes live. So now we are, at the point of uh, the contact information, you already know CCU's contact information. Actually, I think you know Bill and also, but there it is. So CCU, our main number, and many of you have the direct numbers for the consultants. There are two of them standing outside the door. Jocelyn and Robin are here. So um, you can call them for your questions. And then if you have billing questions, uh, the billing group is here. Mike and George are here. And if you call that number or email them, they will be able to help you also. And so I am going to turn it over to Colette Jackson, who will give an overview of what the shopping cart is supposed to be like. Look like. So I'm going to just give you a really brief kind of overview of what the system looks like. Um, it'll be a real 
kind of high level, but then we'll go and do one, uh, we'll put in one request so you can see that. Notice that um, there's two sections. Of course, there's the left nav bar, and in the left nav bar, you have three sections. One that's for, um, for making orders, putting those in, then service requests, which opens up. You can always click on that. And that's how you look at all your orders and see what's going on. And this last section, which is managing services. And you have that today, and many of you use that today. So that's the same. Over here, what we've done is we've tried to simplify the leading you through the path to get to something. So for instance, we have three sections, add something, add cellular, add voice services, and then at the bottom here, it's manage the existing services. So those are three paths, and then within those is where you'll see the individual kinds of services that you can order. So we're going to today just do and add both te desktop telephone and line, just to show you a little bit of how it works. This form is what you'll be putting your um, request in. So it, it's kind of the basic form that happens on, um, in most of the services. You'll see sort of the same thing, something up here that tells you kind of what to do if you need to read through that. And then as you go down, you'll see it asks you the first thing usually, it asks for your um, department. And that's your department ID. And this department ID also determines your access. That's your permissions. You get, um, some people have uh, permissions for more than one department, some only have one department. If you have more than one department, um, you can, you could click the magnifying glass and it'll give you all of the ones that you have access to. So I'm actually, um, I don't know if Patricia Rogers is here today, but I'm using her account to uh, show you because her account looks like what yours will look like. And this is all test data, so you're, we're fine. I'm gonna choose um, ISB or IST, and that pops it in. The department approver, that's for if you do not have um, approval rights or um, what, and if you don't, then you would put the person in here who would, you would want to approve it. If you clicked on the magnifying glass, you would see all the possible managers and people that could approve your um, order. But in terms of, um, if you are, uh, have that rights, you don't have to put anything in there. So you would just skip over it. Um, in our case, we don't. Customer type, we have three types as we do today, the individual, department, and other. I'm going to put in um, and use individual and just um, order a phone for me. How's that in this case, just to make it simple. And you'll notice that it, um, it also, the, it turns green. That means that it has also put in my UID, which is, it connects to LDAP, so it knows it knows, it knows you. <laughs> um, in what building? So in the, our new system, this is really great thing. You don't have to know if you're in a PBX or a Centrex building. You just put in your building, right? And as they say, the computer will know. <laughs> so it will, it determines, it'll know already if, it, if that building is a PBX or a Centrex building. So you don't really have to worry about those kinds of terms. Um, you put in your, the room you want that phone to go into, and then you're going to be asked this question about what phone model. And so today is driven off, um, in the new system, we're driving off of features. So you basically just have to think of what do I want my phone, this phone to do. And so to make those decisions, you can look here, look up, and see all the different, the different models for that type of building, right? And you would decide, just based, based pr pretty much on um, what kinds of features you want for your phone and for your system to do. So let's say you picked out um, this Cortel call right here, the C220B. You say, okay, that's the one I know I want. And you would come back, and then you can do the drop down, find it, and click on it. And it'll just pop it right in there. Um, the calling plan, we've defaulted to U.S. and Canada. Most people have that. Um, when you're calling on someone else's phone, this is the caller ID information. For PBX, uh, you can do both. For others, you can only have phone number. And only. But that's the same as it is today. Um, voicemail packages options. So let's say you want voicemail and you want to know, oh, 
there's three kinds I could get. I could get the basic, the unified, or just announcement. And this kind of just lets you see what costs there are, are involved in, um, which one you might want to choose. And then from there, you can do, again, the drop down. Same thing as the phone. Let's just keep it at basic. And the next thing that's asked, asked of you is the chart string. So we say, um, you just enter your chart string here. This is the uh, one time. And when you click uh, this validate, it will validate out to BFS. So it lets you automatically just goes out there. And it will tell you if it's invalid and give you a little message for that. If you want the same recurring as you are using for the one time, you can click the checkbox and it'll pop that in. If you want a different one, you can type that in and validate that also. So both of those are ready. These two uh, spaces are for pro our programmers, so we're just going to skip those over. Those won't be there when you get when we get ready to go live. Um, and then you put in, let's say, uh, your the person you want to be your contact person. So uh, you can use the same person for all three of these. If you just click on, I want to use the same as, it'll pop it in, or you can put a different one in if you'd like to do that. You put in comments here, um, place phone on top wall for geckos, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, you can still use a department tag for those of you that use that feature now. And um, you can say, yes, uh, somebody, please somebody contact me, or no, you don't. It doesn't matter. Just fill the order. Um, and then once you've filled out all of that out, you're just going to Go right over here to the right and say, I'm ready to order, order now. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's, it's uh, thinking for a minute. And it's then going to pop you back with your confirmation screen. It also sent you out an email at the same time. So <clears throat> you'll, you'll get a request number and you'll get this item number. So now you'll be able to see your request and you'll be able to see all the items for that request listed here. In our case, we just did a simple case. We did one item, so that's all you see in, in this view, is this one item. The thing that's really nice about ServiceNow is this is, this is where we really get um, uh, visibility. So here in the stages, you can click this plus sign, and it tells you exactly where the order is, what's going on. So the, in other words, it's, it's um, done its approval. That's checked off. It's gone through that stage. It's done its initiation, and now it's in configuring the service. So that's what's going on right now. Configuring the service, each of these is connected to tasks that are being done by CCU or by OIR, by, by us in the background. So configuring the service, CCU is now working on that order to get it done for you. But you can see where the order is at any point in time, which is a really, really nice feature. I really like that. Um, then I'm going to go uh, into that order. Um, wait, let me show you. I'm going to show you a home page. If you go back to the home page, so you've put that order in, you're fine. You come back the next day and you go, oh, what are my orders again? You'll see all of your orders here, right? Everything you've put in. So let's look at the newest one, um, which would be, I guess, this one, the one we just put in. And then we click on it. You can see everything that you entered for your order in the previous screen. But what's the nice thing? Now, here's a beautiful piece here. If you look here, you can see there was an email that was sent out to you. But let's say you didn't see your email because you know how many emails you have are like a 1,000 a day. So you never looked at the email. <laughs> but you want to know what's going on with that order. Did I actually put that in? What happened? Right there. There's the email inside of the order, which is really, really great. So if you reply to that email, it will also attach that email in here, in your order. So you can just come here, one stop, and not have to necessarily look at your email. If you do, you'll also be attaching to the order. So that's nice. The other um, really uh, nice thing is right here is this paper clip, and this lets you attach anything. So say if you wanted to attach like uh, um, floor plans, we really like to get those. We like to get floor plans and um, anything else that you need to attach. You can do that by, and then just choose your file, and that will you know, do your basic browse, find the file in, on your desktop somewhere, click it, 
attach it, and there it is. It'll be attached to your, um, to this order with no problem. I'm not going to do that right now, but there it is. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for our, the little bells and whistles. I wanted to say before, you know, we close out on our side, I wanted to thank, we want to thank, um, we've had some uh, users that have been helping us out with feedback and that kind of stuff, and we really, really appreciate that. So I'm going to just tell, uh, call off your names because we want to thank you. Alan Lazaroff, he's been great. Marilyn Totticini, uh, Maria Beltran, Carolyn Leong, Cynthia Robinson, Elaine Banks, and Sia Richardson. All of them have been wonderful help for us in giving us feedback all along the way and um, helping us to develop what we have developed. So thank you for that. And I will give the show back to Miss Joby Solomon. Thank you. Thank you, Colette, <laughs> Terrence, and Gladys. Now we're open for your questions, and hopefully we'll have a team um, with the mic. Do you want to start your hand? No, I think I can talk pretty loud, but um, I just have three questions, two semi-related. Um, who populates the department approval list, and who does, um, who does IST know or how does IST know what level to give each user? So like, how will you know what level to give me on the system? And then who populates the department approval list? Who approves it like for the School of Public Health? So give that to you. And then the third question, which I could just put out there, is also when you get a final confirmation screen that you've placed your order, is it possible to print that screen? Because what we do is we print them and put them in a binder because there's several of us who will track orders and you can't always find them. Like she wouldn't be able to find it on my computer person, so we print it out, and that has all the information, so is that going to be a function that's possible? Um, so, yes, you can print out. You can also print out your order inside. Um, that confirmation screen, can, is there, there is a print on the confirmation screen itself, so yes, you can print that screen. You can print the, the um, request itself, either way you want to do it. it has, it's very flexible in that way. And then the approver um, is actually set by you, so you Oh, so you can, sorry, just in case you want to hear me. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and then the approver is set by the department. So in other words, right now, you have certain um, rights that are set for the shopping cart currently. Those will be ported over, so those are the same. And um, we have uh, basic business rules that port those over into the new categories. So, but you are the ones that will be maintaining that. What you'll do is in, in the shopping cart currently, you'll want to make sure that those are correct now so that when we port them over, um, you will get the right ones. And when the new, we go into the new system, you will still be able to change those rights um, as you need to. You, um, to. you need to, you cannot add a new one but you can, you can change around like what level anybody is in in your area. And is it Mike and George, you, you handle when they add a new um, uh, department, right, to the access yeah. rights? Yeah, if it's a new department, yeah. then, the then billing handles that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Hi, I work in capital projects, so can you hear me? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Oh, okay. Because I could talk with no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I work in capital projects, so I apologize if mine is just a tad bit different yeah, on my question. Because yeah. generally we have surges, moving a whole right. department and groups yeah. and things like that, and we only have one place to go. You know, the voice and the data wasn't separated, and I know you're talking about later down the line that'll happen. But in the meantime, are you guys prepared for us to put it all in one place, like in the data, in the old one? So that, um, it is not in place yet, and, but we are looking at that. So, and we do know that that's a hard thing. But we are looking at that, and um, we're actually in development, like looking at that particular question right now. So we, so we can work as we've been working and just use the old system, perhaps? I'm proposing well, data, that. Yeah, as we have it now, you would use the old system for data. 
and you would need to move it to the board. I'm proposing, and I want you to go back and talk about it. Yeah, the review. <laughs> <laughs> and we all agree. We're doing exactly that. Yeah, we understand. I, I, right. I do, I do hear your request that yeah. if you're turning in an order for both voice and data, your request is if you could go through the shopping cart, and then from there to just the. Because mine are normally glad as you know me, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ours are normally it could be correct. Yeah. Really, so yeah. So what happens actually in the shopping cart is that it will have the dash work orders. Yeah. So, so I think um, you will put them in as you do regularly for the voice portion, and then the data portion will get it, and we'll, you know from the other side and do it the same way. So it won't get lost. If that's your concern, that wasn't useful. Well, I'm not necessarily concerned. I just don't you know if you guys had a chance to discuss it. And um, this is the first meeting, and you know yeah. we're in the beginning stages right. of thinking yeah. about it. Right. Yeah. And I'm all right. So, so yes, we are entertaining. Um, in, you know, bring it in together for one place to order. Because you know we got one spreadsheet right now. Yes. 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 Right. But hold on. Let me answer a little further on that. Oh, sorry. A little further on that is that for projects, you will enter that data through a difference, just as it is entered today. We have a, a completely um, customized system for projects. So yours is a little bit different. In other words, you get lot, list and list of all these, all these um, voice, and then it's uploaded. And that will also, that will still be the case. It just will be uploaded to the new system. So none of that will change, really. And you'll be working, um, Sornette, on the voice side, usually, yeah. And it's, Monica. And, yeah, and Monica, Monica on the data and, side. Yeah. And that doesn't change. Okay. Yeah. And then, um, so, so if you were on the voice screen that you just showed, and you have the little red, that's your mandatory fields that you would fill out? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. right? It's going to look for us to put in data or information. Yeah. So like the room number and location, because it would be... If you got more than yes, that's why yours is not through this. This We're is not a onesie do it twosie. This at all. Exactly <laughs> yeah, right. right. Yours is going to be on a spreadsheet, Excel. We're going to continue. And then you, yes, you will continue the same way. It'll it'll look the same. The spreadsheet will look the same as it does today, and we will be uploading. We will be uploading to the new system. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We it's in a customization. Thank you. And I think we have plans to loop back with your group um, since you work in a different way than everybody else and make sure you, yeah. you're, you're clear on what we're planning for you. I'm clear. <laughs> 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 oh. I don't Hi, I, my name is Judy. I have a couple questions. I saw in the new system where you put the one-time chart string mm -hmm. and then the recurring chart string. Yeah. Well, it's been my experience in the past that when you put in that one-time chart string and you want the basic recurring chart string to happen, it doesn't always happen. Um, and I usually put it in comments is this new version correcting those kind of errors that could happen going forward? So I'm not clear on when you say it doesn't really, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not clear on what you say when we, mean when you say it doesn't really happen. It doesn't what, always happen meaning, because the accounting doesn't come back correct. Uh -huh. And we've kind of stepped up our accounting. Uh -oh. oh, maybe Terrence there knows how, yeah. yeah. It may be the same, but go ahead. Yeah, so in today's world, you enter your chart strings in two different ways. So one yes. is you actually have a text field that you enter it in, mm -hmm. or sometimes you enter in your comments. You say, I'm ordering five different things. Please use this one chart string and use this other one. So that field doesn't get validated. It's just a pure text field in the old system. In the new system, it gets validated, so it will go through. Okay. So that's oh. to answer your question. Yes, that's great. it will be validated, and it will go through. Okay. okay. And the other thing uh, with, well, Perhaps this is directed at her. Um, <laughs> with like large moves. Yes. Um, I just recently did a large move of like 22 people. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed how you put that information in. Would things still work the same way? Lar um, large moves go under projects. And so, projects. Yes. Okay. And that will there be, we... that is a different, so, so a different kind of thing. 
person to that right. thirty or more. So if if we are using an example of a right. two, that would come through the regular child. Right. So um, we I think we do have we do have to address the under thirty, but maybe over. <laughs> Well, however many, you know, I'll type in. I, I understand your question is like 22, do I have to go? The nice thing about this is that you do, you are able to add to a cart, add to cart, add to cart. So that will simplify it if we keep it at, um, you know, at, at 30 or, and you, and you do have to put in like say 20. You would then, it's, the system is designed so that you just clicking add to cart, maybe change the room, add to cart, change the room, add to cart, change the room, add to cart. So it's not like you have to re-put in the whole okay. thing again. All right, <laughs> yeah. thank you. So you should be all right. Oh, where you go? One, and then, and then her. Yeah. Right. Hi, my name is Ken, and I'm wondering, is there a way for authorization, the, the approver, to delegate to someone else, let's say they're going to be on vacation or out of the country for a period of time, um, delegation rights. Um, yeah. So currently, you can you can do that today. You can just you can go in and just change that. So in in there is a um, section just like in uh, the current system that you can delegate or you can give access rights to someone else. But I, my question really is more: if the, can the approver do that? Yes. So yes. the approver knows that it is the away. approver that oh, would okay, do great. that. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Thank and, you. And many departments have more than one approver. So if one is on vacation, the other one can do it. And so you could ask to make sure there's more than one. So that, that if someone is on there, it's always someone that can do it. Um, we have one down here and then. Right here. Yeah. Thank you. It's possible to ask one line. Uh, for, um, for our accounting purpose, for the fund we monitor, can you add one line, separate line for the incurrent monthly charge? The charging oh, information. Oh, for recurring yeah. charge? Yeah. But oh. there is, it, it's there already. Because yeah. you, you are limit with um, there's a one, time. one time, yeah. Oh, there's a one time and then there's, and a, then there's recurring. a recurring box. Yeah, but I want to have a separate life for the monthly and current charge. So they can be different. You might yeah. want to go so, so they can be different, the two. Can you bring that up? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Again. In, in the example that she shows, if you're correct. Yeah, I know one tap. But okay. that, was, that was simply the option to select it. It also has the option already today that you can have one for the initial one-time charge and then a separate line. You yeah. can enter a separate charge. Mm -hmm. No, that's it for the equipment. So here you go. One for equipment for oh. one time charge and in current monthly charge. So you're saying you would like to have a different charge? Yeah, one more line for only. One for, uh, for equipment. Oh, yeah, right now. So here's the one. Oh, okay, the already right split. Thank, Thank you. There, you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the old system, you lump together. Yeah, right. And yeah. this one you can then put a different one in here. Yeah. Oh, um, I was Susan, we have one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Phil. Uh, I just wanted to check if you're ordering a new line, but you have phone equipment. Will the uh, form allow you to not order the equipment, or does it um, get Yes, stuck? so in, in the beginning of the form, um, I won't go away from it. The opening page, there's a separate entry for a line only with no equipment. And it's, it's basically um, a, a form, and you say what you want, and then they'll fill it in the back. Yeah. Hi, my name's Alan. Um, at the beginning of the form, when you're entering your department ID, are we going to be able to enter um, I mean, the processing unit. Are we going to be able to enter one that's on level five, or are we going to be restricted to only level four like it is now? Yeah. Um, Do you want me to take that one? Yeah, you should take that one. Yeah. So I, I met with, uh, my name is John Conheim, and I'm, 
So this is John is the uh, project manager, so and he knows. So uh, Alan, I can tell you exactly where that is. Um, we uh, I met with you earlier about it. We talked about it. So what we have done is the technical lead Terry Koba has come up with the requirements for what it technically would take to do that in the system. Uh, I took the issue to the steering committee, to the executive sponsor and to the sponsor, and pointed out what the challenges were, particularly for large departments like Bass. Uh, and what we uh, then, and I asked for approval to see if we could get an estimate for the cost of doing that. That has been sent to our vendor that's doing some of the development work, and we want to understand from them what it will take to do. We should be getting that estimate back in a week, and it will go back to the steering committee. Uh, and so uh, there are two questions associated with that. We just need to know what the cost is associated with it, and two, how long it's going to take them to do that. Uh, we do recognize it's a severe problem. We would like to be able to do that, uh, and I'll keep you informed about that as, as it develops further. Um, so we do, we do recognize that as a, since the implementation of the um, new org tree uh, on campus, that that's created some challenges departments and so we're looking to see if we can implement that okay one more um, while we're waiting for that I noticed that we can enter an approval person so will any bass sub department be able to enter their own approval person instead right now all of the bass orders go to somebody who doesn't want to see a million orders every single day for other departments so you're talking about on the existing MySoft system yeah, I'm talking about here, there is a place, a department approver, so we'll be able to enter our own department approver, or will we, like, you, all you, kinds of different approvers for the sub-departments within BASS? Uh, I'll leave that to Colette. My, my guess would be is that it's going to show up, all of them. Yeah. You select the one that you want, that is that you have agreed on. Well, currently, And we, I will come back to you, Alan, at that point and let you know where we are. So that is a level question. But you do, in the, in the current, you'll come, it will come up with, you know, all the, the provers at that level. So, and then you would choose whichever one. We will, but then there will be, um, essentially, since we maintain a mailing list, we'll send that out to everyone. So, but, but we're most, you know, if I look collectively, several departments that were impacted. Bass is probably the most extreme example where you went from departments of, let's say, 350 to 400 people to over 1,400. Mm -hmm. So we recognize that your situation is unique. And so uh, I have Alan's original email that he wrote describing the problem. I shared that information. Uh, so we will be letting that. I talked to the Schroner about it as well. And so I will be letting them know. But I know this is particularly a concern and an important issue for Bass. We would like to be able to try to Thank you. Hi, I haven't had to use a spreadsheet before. Can we possibly show me what that looks like? Because in 2014, we will be migrating to cubicles. So I know I'll have an over 30 kind of issue. So, so I'd like to know what that looks like in the new system. Um, when you get ready to do that, what you'll do is you'll contact, if it's over 30, and they'll co contact CNS and projects, and they'll be able to, yeah, they'll oh, send you the fine. spreadsheet and give it, they'll walk you through all of it. Perfect. Don't worry. <laughs> Today, anyway. But in the new system. <laughs> Except for in the new system. <laughs> But I am curious, did, did everybody get a chance? I, I am curious though, and, I, and I, I might be speaking a little bit out of line because I, I don't really know what this all looks like, but just from what you showed me. If you have 29 <laughs> people that you're moving, mm -hmm. it would be nice to be able to say, when you get to the place where you're entering a voice order, 
I have 29 and get 29 lines and just keep going if we're going to have to, if that's the way you want it done. Other than, except for going in and out, you know, or pushing whatever button to continue because then you got to well, keep. Um, you'll, you'll still have to give us the, the room, you would still have to give the room and the. Um, yeah, all the fields. All of that. I would like so all those the would fields be there. I would, this is just my wish list. It's Christmas. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Christmas it's Christmas. It's Christmas. So Christmas. you know. So uh, so Santa Claus. My wish list would look. My wish list would look like. I know when I open up the voice. Just just hear me out. When I know I'm going to order mm -hmm. 29 lines, right? I would like to say 29 and get 29 lines. And then just, and then yeah. put all the mandatory fields. So there, so don't, there's issues in how you um, put all of that together on a system, and that's why we do have the spreadsheet. So you know, if you have 29 lines, I'm like, you know, I'm gonna use the spreadsheet, yeah. but I'm, right. I'm, I'm just I, thinking about the other people. I'm, and I'm, I'll tell you, 29, just just do a just project, a okay? <laughs> <laughs> just do the project. <laughs> but it is designed so that when you look at when you, if you do have that many lines, you do have to put in a different, um, you know, ch you have to put in a different room number for each. And in some ways, you know, is it better, easier to type all of that into a spreadsheet, or is it easier to because just because the do work this? process on know. our end for those who put the CNS orders in, you guys know the work process. Oh, yeah. your, for my, your situation is, but not even capital people. projects, even just mm -hmm. anyone in move. the departments, because it's yeah. the departments that have to give us yeah. the information for all the individuals. Right. That is all going to come on the spreadsheet, whether it's 10 people or whether it's 29 yeah. people or whether it's 100 people. Yeah. And that's what she's... she's, she's and, and, I th and one thing you have to remember is that some things we uh, will be able to build out for in the future, just like we're working the data piece. So, and that's one of the ones that we'll address first. And you because guys, I know that and you so guys generally, if, when you're making doing a surge, not your one-time new hire and stuff like that, when you're doing a surge, mm -hmm. you guys have all that information on all the people, and yeah. you guys generate the report, right. and you give it to us to work from, right? Right. The same be, thing. That's going to stay the same. That won't change. It would be do. nice if the report resided in there, and all you're doing is going in and putting the new room number in. I'm just saying. Well, yeah. it <laughs> will. <laughs> well, hold, hold on, though. Hold on. Hold on one second, though. Rhonda, it will. That new, that new report, it will be attached to the work order. So that is, that will happen. That is, that is on, currently there. So if you do have a, yes, <laughs> there you go. So there is, there is the spreadsheet will, it basically you will be able to, it will be one order and you will be able to see all of those. Right. So, so let that's me talk a little bit about your question. So first of all, the, the new spreadsheet for the voice orders for the projects uh, is currently under development. It's, all, it's nearly done. So we won't show you that today because it's not quite developed, but it's nearly done. It's scheduled to be finished this month. Uh, the other piece of it to keep in mind is for the multiple, you know, you can arm wrestle with Gladys about whether the number is 30, 25, 15, yeah. whatever. And it, right. we, can, we can talk through that and figure out what, what is the right number. Yes, we, we all love Gladys. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, we can look at that. Uh, for the multiple line, uh, ordering multiple items within a single order is something that the team's currently looking at. One of the things in any project like this to keep in mind, and particularly this project, is it's a hosted service. So we used to do things where we customize code, we could do anything we wanted. This is not that model. This is a cloud service. This is a hosted model. So what the team is always doing is scrambling through all the possible options that are available in the system, and they know what you have to go through. And frankly, they don't want to have to hear about it later in terms of, <laughs> gee, this doesn't work for me. This is too hard. So they've identified a couple of options right now that they're looking at that. Next week, we're going to meet. We're going to look at exactly what we think is the easiest for you. Generally, we have one constraint, which is uh, we have a launch of the May 6th date. That's actually driven in part by an appreciation for your workload. Uh, because then you've got, fisc uh, you've got fiscal close, some folks have budget earlier on, so we feel like we have this sort of window where you may have time to do this, and we're trying to make you aware of that early. Mm -hmm. We will do the very best we can. We are not, to be honest about it, we're not going to get it perfect right off the gate. We're going to do the very best we can. We're trying to get feedback. We're spending more time on QA to test it, but we're also looking for your feedback, just the kind of thing that you're giving us today, which yeah. is wonderful. Yeah, uh, and so you're part of the process. And I think we all know at this point, we've all seen a bunch of systems launched, and so it comes out and it's pretty good to a certain point. We get as much feedback as we want, and then we'll continue to refine. 
that will be true for the training, that will be true for the functionality. And so you just keep telling us, here's what's working, here's what's not working. Hi there, I have a question about the billing and how it's only gonna be in bears. Is there a, a, right now we only see the journal IDs, is there a possibility to see the names associated with the charges for the line? Yes, so right now in the, um, when you run a GL detail standard report, which is what we do on the finance side, for SAS 115, you do see that one line. It says TEL and some random number, and then it says $5,000. So when you log into Bears, actually, under the financial reports, you'll see a folder called IST billing. When you click into that folder, you get two different reports. So one gives you all the phone usage you would ever want to see. The second one is called IC recharge services, and that will break down all the IC recharge costs for you to reconcile back to the GL detail report. That is there now. now. Woohoo! Does that answer your question? Yes, I had a question about the um, validation for the names. Uh, in the old system, I always had problems with that. I can understand if uh, a new person, I put a name in, they're not in the system yet, but oftentimes I like to go back and change it once they have established their CalNet ID or whatever, and it will not take it under no circumstance. I've tried to, I just, I have, a, or a woman per se that gets married and changes their name, it just will not take it. And I look at the CalNet ID and it's been updated and everything. And um, there's another system on campus now, is it travel? Where a person has to be in a system in order to be able to do their own yeah. travel plans. Otherwise, someone else has to be able to do it. Is there any limitations on um, the uh, name convention when you do a work order? There's no convention, name convention. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there's, um, you have the same, we have the same systems. We're still using LDAP, so you will still need to um, wait for that. But hopefully, the system will, it, as soon as that name comes through, it should validate for you. But, so we're, so let's, let's go, we're in a new, we'll be in a new system completely. Let us, like, hope that you do not have that problem. I, I won't, I won't swear it because, <laughs> you know, that would get me in trouble. But, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it might, it might have to do with delays in terms of one system talking to another a lot of times. You have to wait longer, or then you have to, yeah. It is, it is like really annoying. I have one. Yeah. Um, but um, be, have we one go by LDAP because that's like official, and we can't like kind of go outside of that parameter. Yeah, but for the record, I think you really should look into it. Like, say, if I have one employee, yeah. and she did get married, and she appears under both names under my statement. Yeah. under the unmarried right. name as well as the married name, and no matter what I do, mm -hmm. she appears in the directory under the married name completely, right. and I cannot so change that, her maiden name, to that name to save my life. Yeah, so in, in, within the um, telecom system, you should be able to do that. Now, I don't know, in terms of outside of that and what happens in the directory is a whole different area, a different group of people handle that. But if, if it's gotten changed, then you need it to be changed in the telecom catalog, it should change. Did you mark that on the survey for us? Yeah. 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 yeah, and then we'll make sure that it, it does it, at least to, yeah. Thank you, everyone.